Hello and welcome everyone. I have been focusing on doing more and more studies lately so that I have a clear idea about these scenes when I'm converting them into bigger paintings. Uh, these are like uh, small plein air paintings uh, done in a studio rather than uh, outdoors with a sense of immediacy. And these do not take uh, more than an hour as these are easier to do uh, compared to doing a study out of doors which is obviously uh, will ask for some sort of preparation. Now in order to produce a good painting, uh, idea is to do a good uh, tonal drawing so that uh, both placement of the objects and the color scheme becomes clearer while uh, painting. As you can see, I generally use a brown for warmer sections and a blue for the uh, cooler areas. Uh, so this is like the most important part as you get to know the combination of light and shade, the shapes and the overall structure of the painting. Now, if I dislike um, a particular aspect of uh, this painting, then I wipe it out uh, so that, you know, the errors are minimized. Uh, this video is uh, slightly sped up so that we can finish it quickly. I did this for about an hour. So it would have been a lot longer otherwise. So I've started covering the areas with the uh, colors. If you're starting on a landscape painting, then it's better to start from the distant section so that you can get a clear idea about the values and then gradually move forward. Uh, things that are farthest from us will be cooler and blue have a bluish tone and the objects that are closer will be warmer and saturated. Now I'm covering the areas pretty quickly and the sky will have a dual tone. One would be cooler and the other section will be warmer. So here is a, you know, a white color mixed with some amount of uh, yellow ochre and some cadmium, a slight amount of cadmium orange. But it's mostly like a warm white. It's important to focus on the basic shapes rather than uh, the details as uh, one can get confused and value shapes and color. Attention to these are all that uh, are required for a realistic painting. And the scope of uh, imagination comes when all those three are understood. How to make a scene more attractive? That's when you need to use your imagination. My objective always is to do justice to a particular scene and make it more beautiful. Sometimes it requires less working, sometimes just the opposite. Here I'm also making the farthest land section a bit cooler and also the distant foliage cooler. This is just a mixture of ivory black and white and some amount of yellow ochre perhaps to retain some warmth. Here I have uh, started adding some Here I have uh, started adding some coolness to the tree. Uh, this is a morning scene, so 
it has an element of interplay between warmth and coolness adding you know a mixture of uh, ivory black and yellow oka this looks black but actually it isn't you know slightly darker sections here and there you can see that the basic uh, blocking in doesn't uh, require any detail it's all about uh, putting the values correctly with just uh, some shadows indication of shadows some highlights here and there or lighter sections some darker sections so this is what makes it makes a scene uh, realistic I'm adjusting some areas there. Just trying to understand where to put uh, some light so that uh, it would attract the viewer. It can be warm, but there is slight amount of warmth in it as well. Now I've started working on the to be harvested wheat and this is Uttar Pradesh in India and just before the lockdown and I took a lot of photographs uh, while uh, coming from home uh, through the train window and this light was just right it's simply not possible to make a study from live uh, all the time but in order to be better in realism uh, it is important to do as much as possible from live it is easier to paint from live when one is slightly more accustomed and uh, uh, frankly there's nothing like it when a you know scene has been captured right adding some light there as well as uh, some darkness so that it retains some amount of drama here i'm blending the edges a little here i'm creating the shadows in the near foreground you know the dagger brushes are uh, really interesting i mean they are like a war horse and they are I believe they are absolutely indispensable when you're painting outside. They can do thin marks, they can do thick marks. You know, they can make any any shape. I mean, uh, it's just you know, I don't think even uh, filberts can achieve that. adjusting and blending some areas and creating some light and putting some highlights there you know highlights are you know great way to attract the viewer to a particular area and it's most of the time it's the center of the picture again there is a cool highlight so everything goes there now i'm using a flat brush and using the sides or sides as well as the tips of the brush 
to get as much abstraction as possible and just bringing the shape uh, of the tree out and I fumbled a little in <laughs> while creating the abstraction but uh, it still looks fine in the final picture you can you will gradually see the tree shape is slightly different and it has lesser number of leaves putting some highlights there and changing the shapes a little here I'm working I've put some color onto the house slight adjustment slight highlight there as well We're putting some yellow color onto the black to create some amount of muted green so this is the shot of the final painting I'll definitely convert this into a bigger painting that might involve some more work and I like the effect and it brings out the morning effect of morning light very well so if you like this video then uh, please click the like button also consider subscribing for more upcoming videos take care and stay well see ya